Yes, you can hear us again? Yes. Yeah. We can't hear you yep. now, though. Our internet bumped us. Can someone say something? Yes, Amy, this is Rich, I can hear you. This is Tom, Amy, I can hear you. Hello. Say something. Say something. Yeah, it should be good. Microphone yeah. check. Can you guys say something? Check one. Two. We can't hear you. Microphone check. Testing. Testing. Okay, I can try hear it again. you. Rick. Microphone check. One two. Testing. Um, Michelle, I don't know if you're watching the time. Yep, I'm just trying to look here on the website to see um, what kind of percentage um, the CARES Fund has going towards elections. And okay, now can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Can you hear us? Amy, can you hear us? Now, can you hear us? Yeah, but it's got the feedback and the echo. So I'm going to mute myself. So I see a lot of um, on this website regarding uh, required to match 20% of the amount awarded for elections. I, I'm not sure exactly on that. So I guess I stated how I felt before, and um, I have to um, leave here for a little bit. I'll you've got to you've got to leave, huh? Yep, I'll be back if I can. Okay. okay. Amy, are you there? Yes. Can you hear us? I can hear you, Amy. Okay. You're, we're doing the audio through my phone. We lost our internet connection. Vicki is okay. still here. Okay. How about everybody else? Uh, Matt, Rick, Joe? Yep. Yes. Okay. We're all here. The question, the question was if you knew the percentage that had to be spent on election related items. Not off the top of my head. I was looking at the email that I had here from, but it didn't talk, it talked about the grant, but not the CARES money. I know Amy and I went to that meeting together, but I don't have that in front of me. Okay. So it's not something we'd have to make a decision on tonight, but we have a little time we have, I think, just after the November election that all this has to be decided upon or be just before the November election where this CARES money has to be decided upon. 
Yeah, it's right after the election. November 15th, if we haven't used it, we have to send it to the county. We use it or lose it. Okay, at this well. time, if there's some, is there any additional comments? Otherwise, All I'm going to ask, call for a, I'm, go ahead. All I ask is try and take the COVID, I understand everyone's ex concerns about COVID right now. Please take that out of your mind. Okay. Go for the number of people we need to process in an orderly, professional, timely manner during an election. COVID is a separate piece and we are managing and we will do what we need to. I put tape on the floor for the primary and I'll do it again. I'm not gonna order these state stickers that say six feet apart. I'm not gonna go and put them on the floor because they're one time use, that's a waste of money. Electric or uh, painter's tape, electrical tape is very cheap and I can tape off the floor at six feet. It's not a problem. I want you to take the COVID piece out of your mind for social distancing. My judges and I will ensure that our voters are six feet apart in socially distancing during election. I just want you to consider the ballots, stands, and being able to get four people, and they're really not that small. They look in the picture, they look small, but they really aren't. I just want you for getting people in and out so they're not standing here in the hallway you know, and that's where people start getting frustrating because it's taking so long, they have to wait. And again, again, the November ballot is lengthy, takes people longer to fill out. Keep that in mind that it's not just for this year. These things should last us long time, but we can process people, a lot more people faster in a better manner. That, that's all I'm gonna say, just take the COVID piece out of, okay. out of it. Okay, Vicki, I'm going to interrupt you there. I think your point has been made. I think the council has heard your point. Uh, I'm going to call for a, is there anyone wishing to make a motion to make this purchase? I will make if the motion. Not, we will, I will make the motion to make the purchase. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Is there a second to the motion? Hearing, hearing no second, the motion dies for lack of a second, and we can certainly bring it up with some clarification at, uh, at the next meeting or at a future meeting. Uh, Mayor? But we need to move along. We need to move along. Thank you, Vicki. With that said, do you want me to look in, in getting pricing for some individual then and adding some in, in individual booth, just getting and spending the CARES money on individual booths then? I think we need an answer to the question about the percentage. Yes. And then uh, certainly any new ideas you would have to present to the council at a future meeting would be, uh, would be welcomed. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right, let's move on to item 15, uh, approve or deny medical services contract with Dr. William or Dr. Michael Wilcox. Amy? This is the same contract that we had last time. Uh, we were missing that last Exhibit B. And Exhibit B is just this little bit that says that we will pay $500. Uh, not this. That says we'll pay $500 per month for Dr. Wilcox's services. Now, my understanding is that his services maybe isn't that isn't all of them but they include mainly oversight of the training of EMTs. <laughs> you have to have an MD in place for your ambulance service you have to have a medical doctor you have to have someone in place Who he is the before? one who's ultimately in charge of our ambulance service uh, we need him for drugs uh, to be able to have drugs for the ambulance and yes, he will be coming down. Jamie does the training, but he will be coming down. He's in charge of the protocols that they use. I think that's what you're referring to with training. Right. He's, we're following his ALS and BLS protocols. 
Who did we have before under our previous ambulance service? It was someone from Ridgeview. The name has changed. Okay. Uh, okay. There's a new person's name that came up today. It's someone okay, from Ridgeview. So, they, they, so when we were working with them, they would always supply the, uh, the doctor then? Correct. Okay. Amy, did you uh, take into account that $500 for the budget? Uh... No, I did not. I just thought of that too. When you, I, I did not include that in our budget. I'll have to go back. We didn't get to the ambulance tonight, but you're right. I did not put the medical director in there. Well, I guess it's something we need. So uh, would someone care to make a motion to approve this contract? I'll make a motion to approve the contract. I'll second. Motion by council member Gilman, second by council member uh, Sharpie to approve the uh, medical services contract with uh, Dr. Michael R. Wilcox at a cost of $500 per month. Further discussion? Amy, are you still there? Did we lose you again? Nope, I'm still here. Okay, Final, is there discussion? And uh, be mindful that we have four votes now. Uh, uh, Council Member Batcher has left for the evening. Um, all in favor of the motion to approve the contract, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is carried. All right. Um, We'll move on to item 16, information from City Attorney Arneson regarding the Sibley Medical Center lease. Ross? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I understood that the council just wanted me to, at this point, give them a general briefing on the uh, uh, arrangements with Ridgeview. Um, and uh, just a couple of qualifiers. Uh, the uh, documentation uh, is about six inches <laughs> of pages in a ring binder. Yeah. So uh, if there are very specific questions, I'll probably have to defer to a later meeting uh, to do research. Um, secondly, some of the more arcane uh, sections, uh, we were uh, uh, aided by a uh, attorney out of the cities who uh, was a specialist in uh, representing uh, municipalities in this type of uh, transaction. And I would uh, also possibly defer some questions to him. Um, so w with those uh, uh, cautions, <laughs> uh, uh, just to, by way of a little history, uh, our hospital was uh, running relatively successfully for a small town independent hospital. And I know at one point before this merger, we were one of three rural Minnesota hospitals running in the black. However, we were starting to show some strains, um, primarily concern going forward with being able to recruit physicians. Uh, uh, especially after doctors uh, Venner and Bergerson retired. Uh, we were fortunate that the two of them were very devoted to the care of the community for many decades. Uh, but once they retired, uh, we were left with trying to recruit doctors on the general market. And that was becoming uh, increasingly a problem. And without doctors, you can't have a hospital. Um, we also uh, were having some difficulty recruiting good hospital administrators. Uh, we had a couple that uh, were not very good. Uh, the last one we had was quite good, uh, but um, uh, you know we uh, uh, seemed to have turnover. Uh, of those hospital administrators every few years uh, as they were offered uh, higher paying jobs in larger hospitals. 
So going forward, that was another concern that we had, uh, being able to recruit good, efficient hospital administrators. Uh, so we went through a, uh, uh, a, a period of uh, due diligence and put out uh, perspectives, prospectuses to, um, I think it was four different hospital systems, uh, but I guess with the expectation that Ridgeview was probably the most logical partner, but we did uh, uh, reach out to other systems. In the end, uh, I think uh, uh, after doing that due diligence, uh, we felt it was clear uh, based on the facts that Ridgeview was in fact our best partner. And so that's why we went in that direction. Um, after lengthy negotiations with Ridgeview's uh, board and our hospital board, and Ridgeview of course had their attorney and we had our attorney, our uh, consultant, uh, we hammered out this very lengthy, very detailed agreement. And it was effective as of December 31st, 2013. So basically, the first year of the agreement was 2014. And uh, we, at that time, um, basically uh, transferred ownership of the hospital's operating equipment and furnishings and inventory to Ridgeview. We leased the physical facilities, the buildings and grounds to them on a 30-year lease. They have an option to renew it for another 30 years, for a total of 60 years. But the expectation was that this lease is probably not going to run its full course. Uh, Ridgeview has, starting 10 years after the inception of the agreement, uh, a running option to purchase the hospital. And that 10 years would be coming up in uh, uh, beginning of 2024. So we're not that far off of it anymore. Uh, if they exercise the option to purchase any time starting in 2014, then that voids the lease. Um, uh, however, uh, if they purchase it, then they do have an obligation to pay us for uh, certain equity we have in the hospital. And that's under a formula which uh, I don't completely understand, but it was felt to be fair at the time. Um, in the meantime, uh, the lease calls for Ridgeview to uh, do several things. Uh, first of all, they have to service the hospital uh, bond debt. And at the time they took it over, there was about $3.5 million of principal and interest uh, for the remaining life of the bond. And that remaining life uh, ends uh, in December of 2026. So we've got six more years of bond payments, which Ridgeview is obligated to make. They're also obligated to pay off the bonds if they purchase the hospital uh, under the option starting in 2024. So regardless of how this shakes out, Ridgeview either pays the bonds uh, under the lease or they pay the balance of the bonds when they buy the hospital from us. So under either scenario, I think uh, that's Ridgeview's obligation. Uh, in addition, under the lease, Ridgeview pays us 1% uh, of the hospital's net worth uh, as of 2013 in yearly rent payments, which is, I think it's about $92,000. Uh, the lease itself doesn't give the exact amount I think that was done in a later calculation, but I know it's it's in the ninety thousand dollar range, um, and that's payable every year by June thirtieth. Uh, the council at that time decided it would be appropriate to set up a policy to apply that ninety thousand dollar yearly rent payment toward health initiatives for the city. The theory being that well. 
that's where the money is coming from, our hospital. So maybe it should be turned around and used for other health concerns in the community. And that has been, I guess, somewhat liberally construed, uh, uh, but uh, it was just a policy of the council at that time. Uh, so it's a policy that can always be changed by new city councils. And I know one of our recent discussions, uh, at least among staff, was maybe using that money to help defray the cost of um, some of our ambulance personnel, uh, ambulance director, uh, paramedics, whatever. Uh, and from a legal standpoint, uh, we certainly are open to doing that. Um, if the lease continues to run its course uh, and, the and the hospital is not purchased after the uh, first 10 year mark, um, the uh, uh, 92,000 a year would continue. Uh, Ridgeview would have to finish paying off that bond. Uh, and then once that happens, uh, the 92,000 a year would just continue during the remaining 30 years. Um, the city has what they call a put option, which means at the end of the 30 years, the city can require Ridgeview to buy the hospital. Uh, so, uh, you know, we do have that option, but it's down the road. Uh, again, I think the expectation was when we entered into this with Ridgeview that they probably would exercise their purchase option uh, at, after the 10 year mark at some point. Um, at the time the transaction occurred, we also had a, a about two and a half million dollar reserve fund that had been earned by the hospital and put aside for contingencies. That was turned over to Ridgeview, but with the understanding that the money was going to be reinvested in the Arlington facility. And that was done, and in fact, uh, I, I don't know the exact figure, but I think Ridgeview, uh, with recent changes to the hospital, has invested about five million, or it may be more than that, but five million was a figure that pops into my mind. So with that having been done, they have in fact reinvested the two and a half million dollars of cash reserves we had turned over to them in Arlington plus a similar amount of their own money from their general system has now been, been invested in the Arlington plant. Uh, let's see. Hey, in the, uh, this is, this is uh, Councilman Morgan. Um, looking through the contract, it looked like it was closer to uh, 5 million that was turned over when it was, uh, um, and it might've been the two and a half in reserve. And then there was, there was, there was some other money and I think it totaled to 5 million. Um, do you know the bond that's currently taken out? It was like on the form that we've got, it says it was in 2010 and it was for 1.8 million in one payment of 205,000. So now it's sitting at 1.6 million, 1.635. Hmm. I don't know if that date is wrong. Uh, yeah, I've got a schedule that uh, shows the original bond principal was three million three hundred forty-five thousand, and with interest during the life of it of about another million, the total bond cost was four million three hundred fifty-four thousand. But I calculated prior to the meeting tonight that uh, you know, of course, we paid the bond starting December first, twenty ten, until um, the end of twenty thirteen, and subtracting that out. Uh, we had paid about 800000 and so I calculated that uh, Ridgeview's total obligation, principal and interest, to finish off the bond uh, came in at about $3.5 million. And then um, looking at the payments um, that they pay, there's, I, I want to say it was like 49000 and then it was um, a larger amount. I don't know if you know what those two were. The, well, well, I'm, I'm looking at a schedule that shows there's uh, two installments every year. The first yeah. installment is interest only, and that's a falling amount. 
Uh, for example, this year it was 29,000. Um, and, but then interest and principal uh, is paid in the second yearly payment, December 1st. And uh, for example, this year, the principal of 210,000, the interest 29,000 for a total payment of about 239,000. Well, I, I will say that I, I guess I was probably the one that requested to get some information on it. It was just trying to understand, you know, what the history was. Um, sure. With the times that we're in, uh, there's a lot of hospitals that are that are losing a lot of money, um, and just trying to be mindful to say, okay, so say if they were one that that uh, for some reason ended up being bankrupt, I, you know, I don't have any reason to believe that, but for whatever reason it would happen, now we would be stuck with a, you know, a, a one point, you know, six, three, five million uh, bond uh, while we've been spending this, you know, $91,000 that they're, that they've been giving to us annually, uh, that bond mm -hmm. payment, you know, annually is 205,000. So we'd have to cover that until somebody else was able to move in or, you know, the, you know, we, if we were able to get the hospital back going again, you know, very, very worst case scenario. Yeah. Probably yeah, not uh, going to happen, but, you know, it could. Sure. And, and um, you know, that's, that's something that the uh, council at the time uh, looked at. And I guess it was a case of uh, we felt that, you know, it was, it was probably the, the best available choice to do the merger uh, because uh, we contemplated that, especially with difficulty of recruiting doctors, yeah, uh, our hospital might not have much longer to exist independently and yeah, I, I, uh, I might be faced with closing it. But on the other hand, uh, you know, as you correctly pointed out, there's no guarantee that Ridgeview, although it's a you know, larger system, uh, would exist forever. Uh, and, uh, you know, a worst case scenario would be that they would fold, uh, at that point, uh, yes, we, we are still obligated under that bond, but, um, any, any uh, liquidation, any, the Ridgeview system, you know, see, they guarantee this, this lease, uh, their system does. So, uh, in any liquidation, I guess, you know, we would have a shot at saying, well, you know, some portion of Ridgeview's assets. Uh, should be uh, devoted to this obligation. Uh, you know, in other words, take Arlington off the hook on, you know, at least some of the bond balance. But uh, could we ultimately get stuck with some of this if Ridgeview folds? Uh, yes, it could happen. Ross, the um, the payment that. Uh, that 1% each year of the value, uh, I do believe that is recalculated each year. I don't think it's still at 92. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never really been sure, really directly, I, in, I, yeah, I've never been directly involved in that. Uh, you, know, I, you know, the city and the city's accountants uh, mm -hmm. would be able to speak to that. And I'm guessing if I read the agreement uh, as uh, council member, Morgan may have uh, read that part that it says it's recalculated each year based on the value of at yeah. the end of December. Yeah. I, I tried to scan over the, the high ticket items because, yeah, there was a lot of pages in there. Uh, <laughs> okay. Any other questions of... Uh, Attorney Arneson, that was, I appreciate the overview. That was great. Thank you. Any sure. other questions of Attorney Arneson? All right. Thank you, Ross. I appreciate it very much. Sure. Amy, you are still there? I'm still here. Okay. Um, Item 17, future of city committees, uh, in, in specifically the personnel committee. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was brought up um, concerns about getting rid of the personnel committee uh, because there were concerns about talking about personnel related issues in front of the whole council at a work session. I, I'm split on that. Uh, I thought about it and I thought, yes, I see good and I see bad with that. Should two council, you know, I, what, when we're talking in a group, if we're talking about basically policies and COLA adjustments, I can see that in front of a whole group, the whole council. If we're talking about a specific employee, it should be talked about with just the personnel committee. But then it made me rethink, should we be talking about specific employees with two council members or should that be left to department heads? Should they, should we be talking about specific employees at committee meetings? I don't know. I'm torn. Yeah. Tell me your thoughts. Well, I think there is some value. This is Mayor Nagel. I think there is some value in um, being able to bounce um, comments about individuals personally off of two council members. Uh, just to see if they are in agreement with administration. For instance, if there's some discipline to be had or if there's some change or some issues with an individual employee, um, I think there's some value in, in just getting a little more support or not support before it's brought to a entire council meeting. And of course, if it's going to be talking about um, an individual and that individual chooses to have it be a closed meeting. In other words, they always have the option for it to be an open meeting, but I think we have to be really careful about that. I, I think if, if the council and is talking about uh, a specific person and uh, through discussion, the person's name leaks out or, or the other attendees at the meeting can pretty much know who it is, I think you run a real fine line there with, uh, uh, you know, data privacy. Just a reminder that committee meetings are subject to open meeting law, so we'd still have to close. They are, but are they advertised? Do they need to be advertised? They are. I've been advertising them when we have committee meetings. I post well, I guess to the my point, would, my point would be do they need to be advertised? In other words, being there is not a quorum of council members there, uh, is it is it absolutely necessary to advertise them? I think in the public relations way, it's a great thing to do to let the public know yeah. meetings that are taking place. But when it comes to a personnel committee with only two council members on it, uh, I'm, I'm just wondering what the law is on that for advertising. Ross, any input on that? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I know that, uh, of course, if we have a quorum of the council, uh, that has to be advertised. That's a public meeting. Um, a committee meeting, uh, I think that it's recommended, uh, but I'm not sure that we're legally required. Uh, I would have to check on that. But I, I guess off the top, uh, yeah, go ahead, Amy. I had a thought, Ross. Why couldn't we handle a personnel committee meeting like we do the revolving loan fund committee? Because that has to be closed. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, it, yeah. And when we're talking about employees, it, it kind of complicates this issue. The mayor very correctly stated that we have to be careful if we're talking possible uh, discipline issues uh, because that uh, well among other things the employee has to be notified uh, it has to be a closed meeting unless the employee requests in writing that it be an open meeting um, and you know we can get into trouble if uh, we're you know not not observing those rules now if it's just a routine you know, periodic uh, job evaluation, um, you know, I, I don't think that would be considered a disciplinary hearing. Um, I guess the way to differentiate would be if a hearing is going to be held, which could involve 
some sanctions on the employee, uh, you know, a reprimand, suspension, or firing, well, then that, that's definitely a disciplinary hearing. Um, if it's just a general job evaluation that, well, you know, you're doing well here, you could improve a little bit there, uh, I, I don't think that's a disciplinary meeting, and it wouldn't have to be closed. But, um, yeah, I can I can check on that question uh, of, of whether we have to advertise committee meetings uh, if, if there's no quorum of the council present. Okay. Dave, this is uh, Morgan here. Um, I, yeah, I do, you know, thinking about that now, I do think that there's some, you know, merit to, to have some more discussion on that. One thing that I, that kind of came up is, is could we do that situation via email um, where um, the administrator emails to the council and we reply back individually type of thing. Um, whether, you know, that way it, it could still be the full council getting it, you know, cause we had that the situation just recently um, and me residing on that committee, you know, as being one of the members, um, you know, how did the other uh, uh, council members feel about those decisions? And ultimately, I know the last time there was a similar one I had gotten reached out to um, just to kind of give a heads up, which I thought was great because it, you know, it let me kind of knowing what was going on. Um, in this case, you know, I don't know if that same thing happened or, or not, but um, all the council members would be, um, you know, in the loop on it, or in this, you know, if we were all on it, then everyone would kind of have a, um, a little skin in the game on what, you know, what would take place or what maybe they didn't want to have take place. Um, so I don't know if that's an option doing, uh, doing, doing something like that via email rather than, you know, pulling the whole person in, you know, pulling them, everyone into a meeting room to uh, discuss talk, you know, to talk about the items, which could still happen, but I'm not sure that every case would need to have that. I guess I'm wondering um, about the appropriateness of, of department heads handling this. Amy, you brought that up, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about that, what your opinion is on department heads just handling um, disciplinary actions. Well, my thought is uh, department heads work with that person. Council doesn't know what's going on day to day, uh, except what they're hearing from the department heads anyway because they're, they're not part of the day-to-day -day interaction with those employees. That was my thought with, um, I don't mind the idea of bouncing it off of somebody. So that's why my thoughts are like a revolving loan fund committee, but it's, it's the department heads, for example, public works with their department, the police with their department, me with admin know what's happening in those departments. Yeah, and I, uh, this is Joe again. So in the recent case, you know, that was, that had already taken place. And I, I would, I would be proposing that that should be happening. You know, if it was in, in public works, then it should be, you know, Kirby should be um, working with Amy to basically give him any guidance or maybe bounce ideas off if he needs to um, on how to take care of, um, behavior or performance type stuff that should be automatically happening now when it gets to a level to where you're 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 where it's getting to a point where whether it be suspension or termination or anything like that then uh then you take it up a notch to to make sure that you know the council's informed on it and, and is fully supporting um, those type of decisions now, if there was, you know, some sort of act of violence or something like that, you know, some of those things can just, you know, need to happen like pronto. They need to happen right away. Um, but like, you know, showing up late or, or performance type stuff um, should happen from the department head. And then once it just 
being elevated where it's, you know, four or five or six times, whatever those numbers are, um, and you're looking at doing either suspension or termination, then it, then it gets kind of elevated to where council knows about it. Well, I guess my, my position on this as mayor would be that we, before we act on a resolution, um, eliminating all the committees that we uh, decided on at last meeting, and that, that would need to be done formally in a resolution form. I think we need to look at that particular committee and see if we want that included or not in the resolution. Um, I, I'm just a little afraid when it comes to personalities. In other words, a utility committee or a streets committee or whatever, you really aren't talking about a person's livelihood and you aren't talking about, uh, you know, a, a very private personal uh, situation, but personnel committee you are, or potentially you could be. And I'm just wondering if we want to exclude the personnel committee from, from that group uh, that we talked about or acted on at last meeting. Um, I don't know. Um, it would be it would be erring on the careful side, put it that way, to exclude the personal committee, personnel committee, and let that one function, at least for now, let that one function uh, as it has been. I think we'd be erring on the careful side. Yeah, I, I think with the personnel committee, that's one that we should probably have in place. Um, do we have something in writing, you know, with guidelines or whatever this committee is supposed to be doing or what is its responsibility is that uh, could be shared and reviewed? Amy, is there a job description or so? There's got to be something on the personnel committee. There's something in the code, but I'm not sure that it's that detailed. I think in the past, Matt, it's been personnel related uh, items such as um, health insurance, uh, benefits, uh, wage scale, you know, um, COLA, um, those types of things, or, or maybe staffing, uh, understaffing, overstaffing, that type of thing. Okay. Yeah, because as far as like, you know, reviews and all and disciplinary action that should be the department's head's responsibility you know and if there's questions to be asked or information be that needs to be you know could go to the personnel committee but um i mean just the one meeting that i had with uh with uh councilman morgan um you know and we were there for what an hour i believe before we had a before amy had to leave so some of that stuff can take a long time just dealing with personnel so this might be a committee like so that we should hang on to okay well we had talked about uh kind of taking it in steps so maybe this would be you know take a step back and put this one back in and and you know see how the year goes with the yep. other this is kind of a trial anyway, and we haven't formally uh, approved our, our committees for the year because that will be done in resolution at the end of this year, beginning of next year. So we can put it back in. Did it used to be called employee relations? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's employee it's relations. It, yeah, on the, on the listing it is employee relations. We certainly could change the name of the council felt it would be more appropriate. The code book that I have here lists it under chapter four and under council committees, but I'm not seeing the actual subsection for employee relations. There's employment review, but that's allocated under for the library committee. So maybe, I don't know if mine's out of date and there was something okay. that I missed to be added. Otherwise I'd have that answer for you in reference to what the code book actually said, but I don't see anything that actually states the employee relations in my physical code book here. So. Okay. 
Well, how about if we look into it a little further, see if we can find a just description of what that committee's responsibilities are. And uh, again, we've got a number of months until we incorporate it in a resolution and finalize it. So uh, All right. council is, is okay with that. Let's just keep it moving forward. Okay. Any other points that someone wants to make or ideas, thoughts? All right, let's um, move on to new business. Item 18, approve a deny contractor's estimate number eight in the amount of $94,934.52 for the 2019 street improvement project. That was, I'm just trying to pull up my screen with the packet. It would leave it would leave as a retainage $22,142.38. And Correct. that would be that would be the balance that would be remaining to be paid off on that project. And uh, that of course has something to do with the sod, uh, not sod, but the landscaping uh, issues that need to be taken care of. And I did speak with uh, our engineer, Jason Femright, and he was okay with it. Thus, they sent me, I, I spoke with him, he had been on vacation, and then they sent me the, if we're gonna drop it down, they felt it was fair for what's left with just the lawn. Uh, he felt it was fair. I talked to Corey, I talked to Jason. So that's how we got a copy of this new estimate number eight. So, do you, you need a motion? Yes. You need a motion on that, yes. I'll make a motion to uh, make a payment, uh, payment number eight. Uh, looks like it's uh, what you got on the screen here, if that's correct, uh, $94,934.52. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Was that math? Yes. That was math. Okay, motion by Council Member Morgan, second by Council Member Sharpie to approve the contractor's estimate number eight in the amount of $94,934.52 for the 2019 Street Improvement Project. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, uh, number 19, um, approved deny replacement of a three quarter ton public works truck from Brow Motors in the amount of $32,715. Uh, Administrator Newsom. And this, this was in the capital improvement plan for 2020, $32,000 was budgeted. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to buy a pickup that you buy it from someone local. So I would recommend Browns. Uh, Amy, is this the truck that the plow is on the capital floor for next year? That's a good question. I don't know if this is the one that they put the plow on. I um, it's so. I thought that it's, they were. We saw it that day when we were at the shop. Right. Probably for the Ford, I guess. I, no, it's not for the Ford. The Ford is it's for an older Chevy that is being traded in or, or sold or whatever. No, no. Correct. I mean it's the, the Chevy. Oh, the, the plow. The V plow, right? Was the V plow? So going you're asking on the whether the V plow goes on the Ford or to, it will go on this new one? Correct. Yeah, I believe it'll go on the new one. This was the city's main plow check for almost 20 years. Yeah, 2001, I think. If I remember right. Correct. There we go. Sounds right. There we go. I figured it out. Yes. So, is there a motion? Is 
in the budget? Yes, it was it's like I said, thirty-two thousand was budgeted for it. Well, we've got a lot of trucks. Like there's a Dodge there, extended cab. Um, is does the is the Ford is that used for plowing snow too? I would say yes, because just checking on my notes, it says this is the main truck for plowing snow. That must mean they use the other one for plowing snow as well, Joe. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to approve replacement of the three quarter ton public works truck from uh, Brow Motors in the amount of $32,715. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Council Member Omrine, second by Council Member Gilman to make the purchase of a uh, replacement truck. It would be a um, purchase from Brow Motors in the amount, and the truck is a three quarter ton and uh, in the amount of $32,715. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Okay, then uh, item 20 uh, regarding the FEMA payment. Uh, Amy, I'm just going to turn that one over to you. Uh uh, Chief Zaski had uh, sent me an email. We were emailing back and forth about this needed, and we were waiting for an example to come to us from FEMA. So this is the language they would like to see in there. I didn't reinvent the wheel. This is what they asked me to put together. So I've just filled in that this is City of Arlington. In the template they gave us and said, it's required for this grant and any other federal funds we may receive. So I can talk about so what we're asked, being asked to approve oh, yeah. is the um, no. the procurement okay. policy. Correct. Okay. There's no dollars in bed or no dollars. I'm hearing a lot of background noise, and I missed out on what Rich just said. I said there's no dollar amount there. We aren't buying anything here. It's just to to no, approve of that policy. policy procurement policy. Okay. How we go about procuring bids? Quotes. I, I just you, you want a motion to approve this policy? Yes, please. Is there a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the policy, the procurement policy. Is that Matt? Yes. And Joe? Correct. Motion by Council Member Sharpie, second by Council Member Morgan to approve the procurement policy uh, for federal funds for future use. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carried. Move on to uh, miscellaneous business, uh, Cable Commission. Uh, Matt Sharpie, you're on. Yeah, um, just so you know, I was able to get a hold of Mr. Warner. We talked for a while. Um, there have not been any meetings since the last one in June. Um, sounds like there is one. There will be one coming up here. Um, did ask a few questions. Like I said, the, the, fan the franchise fees on the two public access channels. Um, you know, runs the churches or show shows the, the local churches and then the council meetings for each um, each town. Um, the money they get in goes for, uh, you know, grants for, they, they dish it out in grants, whether it be to, to various communities, uh, libraries, schools, other organizations. Um, it does sound like they're looking into new equipment for, to go more high definition, you know, kind of get with the times as far as the, um, for the public access stations. I don't know if that means we get new equipment. 
I guess I'll be finding out that shortly um, here. Like I said, this, I should be getting some information here soon about an uh, upcoming meeting. Um, right now, they, they don't, they're in between um, treasures. One person resigned, so there's got a new one, and I'll be asking some questions at the next meeting. So that's about all I got right now on this. And like I said, hopefully, at the next meeting, I can get some more information. Okay, any questions of Matt? Anything you want him to bring to the uh, Cable Commission meeting? Okay, any items for uh, open discussion? Uh, can I just throw something in there real quick? Yeah. No financial reports, yeah. right? Not, they haven't been doing financial reports. No, they haven't been doing financial reports. Um, I know from what I've heard after talking with Tom uh, in previous, uh, council members that have been on the committee, I believe Galen was ready to get off of the, get out of it. Tom got in, he kind of pushed to keep it on, keep with it. He's gotten some money for various things. Um, I guess before we address the option of what we're going to do with the commission, we need to look at communicating with the churches too, to find out what, you know, how this all, all is going to work out if we decide to go on our own away from the cable commission. Um, but yeah, I'd like to get some more information before I can even make a decision on this one. Okay. Attorney Arneson, did you have any input on this? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, uh, I think everything's covered. Okay, all right. Yeah, move on to open discussion. Is there anything else that needs to be discussed at this time? Matt, did they actually say when the Arlington City Council's replays were played on that cable channel? I did not ask specific times. I can ask what the schedule is and kind of get a get an idea. Okay. I can if, ask that. if they do have like a set schedule, then I think it would probably be best to update the website, our city website webpage with those times, since that yeah. was supposed to be brought up as inaccurate. Right. And if I if I remember right when I had Mediacom that they were I know when I was flipping through channels and got on those public access, I think there were specific council meetings at the, about the same time. Um, I think I saw Winthrop once at later in the evening, but I'll find that out what specific schedule is for everything. And that might be something yeah we can post to, to have on. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. I think this is something we really Any got. Any other to questions? And figure out what the value, you know, if we're, if we're getting the value from it, um, Simply, if we if we overpay money in for a service, and then we get some money back to use for something else, um, we could just line item those that kind of money for that service um, when we want to do a project or something. Um, you know, a lot of the churches are going via Facebook. Uh, a lot of city councils are are actually uh, putting their stuff out on Facebook Live. Um, you know, we've we've got a YouTube account, so um, pretty large amount of money. Um, be nice to know how many people are actually getting able to view it for, for that amount of money. I would I would definitely agree there. That, you know, with the the different avenues that we can show our meetings and the churches are going, um, that would definitely be something to look at and. And I think we've discussed this a couple of times that the, the franchise fees come from Mediacom. That's that's basically um, what is on your bill if you have Mediacom and that goes to the cities and the cities turn around, and turn that over to the commission, which uses it as grants and whatnot. Um, if we were to go on our own, I'd like to keep at least part of that as a grant for our local communities, whether it be for churches or whatever to help with you know, different things, the library, you know, things like that. Okay. Any other items for discussion this evening? Hearing none, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Motion by council member Amrain. Second by council member Gilman to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.
Opposed, no. Motion is carried. Meeting adjourned at 844.